Welcome to another movie plot. In the late 1980s, a young supermarket clerk named Ashley Williams worked housewares with his girlfriend Linda on the registers. One weekend the two went to a small cabin in the woods for a romantic getaway, where they discovered the ancient book called the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, or roughly translated the Book of the Dead. Upon reading its translations allowed a demon claimed the life of Linda and possessed the hero's hand. He used a chainsaw to remove it and attach the device to the wrist for protection, when a vortex opened up and transported Ashley and his Oldsmobile back to the 14th century. Our story begins with Ash being surrounded by a group of English knights who witnessed him fall from the sky. The wise man takes Ash's weapons and suggests to his lord that he may be the one foretold in prophecy to deliver them from the deadites, demonic creatures that have plagued the people of the time with constant attacks. Lord Arthur suspects it's more likely that he's a spy for their rival Duke Henry of Scotland, who they've recently captured and are transporting home for execution. They enslave the newcomer along with Henry's men and take them back to Arthur's castle. Once there a woman named Sheila searches for her brother amongst the returning knights, but Arthur informs her that he fell in battle to Henry's men. The distraught lady takes her anger out on Ashley assuming he's to blame when the caravan reached the sacrificial pit. The English have captured a deadite at the bottom of it and use it to slaughter their enemies in a gory display. Henry remarks that he knows Ash isn't one of his men but that it's pointless for him to try convince the king. Arthur believes that Henry's to blame for all of the evil plaguing his land while the Scottish believe the same of the English. When it's Ash's turn to be sacrificed he begins preaching his case when Sheila's hurt enough and stones him in the noggin. He stumbles forward and is thrown into the misty cave system beneath the castle. A possessed woman springs forth punching Ash to the ground but he's able to get the upper hand in nearly all melees with deadites. Apart from the king and Sheila, the townspeople are more happy to see evil defeated than the Scots and cheer the hero on. Arthur activates a spike crusher which Ash is able to throw the deadite against before being thrown his chainsaw by the old man. When the creature returns he decapitates it with a single swing to more adulation from his new fans. Suddenly another deadite floater appears but the now armed hero is able to cut off its reaching hand, and uses his belt to give him the grip he needs to escape the pit in time. Everyone stands around in shock as the survivor smacks the king to the ground and challenges his right hand man Goldtooth to a fight, but he backs down and takes it out on another when Ash walks away. Ash is able to free the overjoyed Henry who rides back to Scotland with his men. Prompting the king to draw his sword but it's blown apart, by the hero's Remington double-barreled sawed-off shotgun returned to him by the wise men. Ash then calls it a boomstick to the frightened inhabitants and describes its features like a true salesman. When the pit deadite returns he demonstrates its power sending it flipping back into the pit. Soon after the hero is treated like the king while Sheila apologizes for her assumptions and the way she treated him earlier. The wise man enters and says that the only way for Ash to return to his time is to retrieve the Necronomicon, which in the present is housed on an altar inside a graveyard on the other side of the kingdom. Suddenly a deadite's penetrated the walls and issues a threat to Ash should he go against them before collapsing to the ground. The hero's seen this before as the deadite's just baiting them closer and leaps up. The friendly blacksmith comes to the aid of his king but requires Ash to save him with the boomstick. The deadite needs only two more shots to destroy it requiring no decapitation like the others for some reason. In preparation for his quest, Ashley has the blacksmith construct for him a new hand from a suit of armor. That night while working on it Sheila enters and begs the hero not to leave them but to help destroy the evil. When Ash refuses and insults the primitive's entire existence she slaps him and walks away, which is a good enough reason to start a relationship. The next day the king and his men ride out with Ash to the end of the cemetery road. Before sending him in alone, the wise man tells Ash that he's to speak a Latin phrase when he takes the book or else the army of the dead will arise. As soon as he starts down the road Ash begins to get chased by an unseen evil that knocks him off his horse. Now on foot he flees into a nearby windmill for safety where the angry Kondarian demon eventually gives up banging on the door. That night a cluster of Ash's reflections climb out of a shattered mirror and begin to attack him, using forks around of his boomstick the heated stovetop and stabbing a nail through his foot when he tries to stomp one. Ash kills a few but eventually slips over and knocks himself unconscious. When he wakes up the little guys have him tied down and one dives directly down Ash's throat. In an attempt to kill the little Ash the original drinks boiling water and we hear it gargling inside his stomach in pain. Just then an eyeball begins to grow from the hero's shoulder sending him running into the woods terrified as it rapidly forms into a conjoined Ash. It's aggressive and rude until eventually it splits apart giving us the evil version of Ash. But good or bad he's still unarmed and takes a bullet to the beat. Ash then takes both of him back to the windmill and dismembers the other him before burying himself out back. Evil Ash's head continues to talk crap until he's fully covered and given the respect of getting a marked grave. The hero doesn't wait until morning and instead rides to the cemetery that night. 
when approaching the altar Ash sees three books instead of one which wasn't in the wise man's description. His first attempt opens a portal to hell which consumes Ash completely, until he manages to claw his way back out. After fixing his elongated face with a few shakes, Ash attempts the second book but the cover viciously bites him and latches on. It's pulled free and thrown away before fluttering back to its original placement. With only one option left Ash suddenly remembers to speak the magic phrase but realizes he's forgotten the final word. Unable to remember the Latin phrase, Ash tries to trick the book by mumbling something similar and swiping it. The graves begin to crumble and the army of the dead awakens to recover the book, as the wise man becomes aware that something's wrong when lightning begins striking the castle. As he's held down to the ground by the skeletal deadites one sticks its entire hand down Ash's throat, but he manages to get himself free and escape on horseback. When he reaches the castle the people celebrate his return but Ash demands to be sent back to his own time. The wise man tells him that he's unleashed the army of darkness and doomed them all to hell, but Arthur says a deal's a deal and to make preparations for his time travel. Ash has let down everyone who thought him to be the chosen one except for Sheila, who says she still trusts that he'll save them all. When he still refuses she calls him a coward and walks away, but a flying deadite comes over the castle walls and snatches her up. It flies her back to the cemetery while the archers are unable to fire for fear of hitting her. During the storm evil Ash also resurrected and is ordering the army of darkness to dig themselves up and capture the surrounding villagers. He's had Sheila brought to him to make her his bride and instantly converts her into his own deadite queen. This encourages Ash to lead the English against the deadites despite all but 60 men fleeing the kingdom. The rest contemplate leaving but the blacksmith leads the others in joining Ash to protect their lands. In a quick montage, Ash pulls a science book from the trunk of his Oldsmobile to help construct explosive arrows and convert the car into a death machine. When the army of darkness approaches the castle the living lock the book away inside a guarded tower for protection and seal themselves behind their walls. From atop the hill, Evil Ash issues the order to attack and hundreds of deadite warriors begin to swarm the castle. Using their new explosives the archers destroy dozens of siege shields and deadites who shatter apart, only to be ordered by their general to put themselves back together. The skeletal deadites replace the drawbridge with their own and use a battering ram to plow through the front gate gaining access. A large battle takes place where the living lose half their numbers in a matter of minutes. With their brittle arms the skeletons can barely lift a crossbow while the fleshy deadites are able to move through with haste. In his battle wagon Ash emerges from the blacksmiths and begins culling the undead numbers of both types. Appearing to him as her living self, Ashley swerves to avoid hitting Sheila but his vehicle is destroyed. Deadite Sheila then attacks him with thrusts of her spear but Ash is able to avoid them and kick her down into the pit. The king's defending the book with only a few of his knights left, when he gets knocked out by evil Ash who's reached the top of the tower to seek out his prize. He kills the remaining guards and almost gets his hands on the Necronomicon, but having used a hoist to swiftly reach the top of the tower Ash throws a spear through his evil counterpart's back. The heroes then leapt on by a returning angry Sheila but she's easily skewered and tossed off the tower. Finally the two Ashleys battle across the castle walls with both eventually taking other soldiers' swords and dual wielding. Despite the hero landing multiple kill shots, evil Ash continues to advance until the original and the rest of the kingdom becomes overwhelmed. Just then Duke Henry leads his army to the aid of Arthur and to the destruction of the evil that plagues his lands. Ash is able to use his metal hand to catch and survive a killing blow, and uses a torch to set evil him's face on fire to be kicked from the wall. Victory's near when a skeletal Ash returns for one last attempt to claim the book. His head spins around with each punch and he knocks Ash and his torch from the wall landing right next to a catapult. The flame ignites the explosive loaded onto it, and when evil Ash drops down onto it with the Necronomicon in hand boasting of his victory, Ash slices it off and launches the Deadite leader into the sky riding the explosive to his demise. With the book now in hand and the army of darkness scattered to the winds, Sheila somehow exercised and cured of her possession. The English and Scottish appear to have reverted back to being each other's enemies until their lords step forward and embrace each other with gratitude. The living are victorious and the wise man soon creates a potion for Ash that'll send him back to his own time. He's told to speak the same words that he screwed up in the cemetery and kisses Sheila before riding out of her life forever. Ash must use the potion because we next see him at work telling his friend about the time he was almost king, but says that he may have got the words wrong again. An attractive new saleswoman's taken Linda's place at the store when suddenly a deadite attacks the both of them. It goes for the new girl first so the experienced one brandishes a rifle and blows away its weapon like he did the witch with his boomstick. They then engage in a chaotic shootout using more bullets than the gun can hold and destroying half the store, when Ash simply needs to land a few bullets in a row to get the win. Our hero then grabs the modern day damsel and says hail to the king before kissing her. And the movie ends.
groovy.